What do you like about corn? It's cold. Hey friends, it's Akadaris. Hello, hi, it's been a good while since I uploaded. Dropping those excuses. Cause like, I do a lot of things besides YouTube now. Ha! Point is, is that I'm here. Wait, am I really here? So this might come as like a surprise to you guys, okay? Japan has like a lot of manga and like a lot of anime, like a lot. Well, no shit. Japan has gifted the world with a lot of anime, a lot of manga, and a lot of sexy time. Like this one. You have good anime, you have bad anime, you have mid anime, you have man anime, and you have see an anime. An anime. An anime? Ha! There have been anime that have been banned, pulled off the shelves, deemed controversial. Anime has basically been around for a very long time, and nothing lasts without a little bit of controversy in between of all of that. Especially in today's age where I feel like it's very easy to pick apart an anime and call it problematic which I don't even know what that means anymore. Isn't there a bad side to everything? Like, aren't we all problematic? Well, the same thing applies to manga. You have bad manga, you have good manga, you have green manga, you have orange manga, and you have banned manga. Manga that have been ceased publication or have been banned from schools or pulled off the shelves or pissed on. But as we all know how drama works, controversy only brings more light to the source that it's coming from. So I'm going to show you guys three manga in Japan and some of which were so controversial that they had to be banned. Luckily, I have two out of three of those in my hand right now, which only goes to show you what happened. Okay, so getting into it, the first manga that I want to talk about is Hadashi no Gen or Barefoot Gen. Okay, so a really, 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 really long time ago on this channel, like I want to say it's one of the first videos I ever uploaded, it's still up. It's a rant of me talking about Grave of the Fireflies versus Barefoot Gen. Both movies take place during the war, and throughout that whole video, I basically was talking about how I thought that even though Grave of the Fireflies is sad, I think I like Barefoot Gen a lot more for different reasons. But basically what you have to know about Barefoot Gen is that this is a movie based off of a manga that takes place during the bombing. I'm sure that it doesn't come as a surprise that the bombing is a very touchy subject when it comes to Japan. So seeing a movie slash manga talking about that in any way, shape or form can usually get some eyebrows raised and make some people feel uncomfortable. So when this manga was published, there was a couple of schools that wanted it to be pulled off the shelves due to how gruesome and how horrifying it was. And the fact that this was in children's schools was worrying the school boards. The story of Barefoot Gen follows a boy who tries to make the most out of life after losing his father and sister in the bombing. I will say that the bombing scene of this movie can be a hard pill to swallow if you are kind of very squeamish but death by an atomic bomb I feel like is a picture that none of us have been able to imagine so the artist tried their best to depict that kind of death and how horrifying it actually is so because of that a lot of school boards kind of wanted to just pull this out of the elementary schools and junior schools because they thought it was too grotesque but to be honest I think that if you're gonna teach about history you're gonna have to just say it as it is I just don't get why you would want to ban a manga like this because it's actually a legitimately good story it's a masterpiece and I think once you watch it or read it you will feel more more things than you did for Grave of the Fireflies. I said what I said, bet. Ignore the fact that I'm on the floor right now because this is the best way I'm gonna convey my thoughts. But if you liked Unbroken, the film, then you will definitely like Barefoot Gen because imagine the main character of Unbroken, but instead of a full grown man who is going against pretty much the entire Japanese army, Condense him down now to a 12 year old kid who has just been through the bombing attack and now has to fend for himself and provide for him and his mother. When you read or watch this, it will stick in your brain. Yeah, I still got a long way to go. But let's be honest here, this is a movie about the bombing of Japan and about war and the after effects of what war does. There's no sugarcoating it. There's no way to make that pretty. And they decided that elementary and junior school shouldn't have something like that. 
hey guys, I'm just editing this right now, and I just found out that the whole reason that some of these schools banned the manga and the movie what didn't even have to do with the war itself. The reason was it's because there's a scene from the film where two boys are out looking for food, and they find a fish in a pond. It turns out that the pond is owned by a rich guy, but they didn't care. They stole the fish, they went and cooked it, because at this point in time, it's every man for themselves. The school board looked at that and said, that is teaching kids that it's okay to steal from your fellow neighbor. Now, I've seen this film many times and I can tell you that that is such a small, small part of the film. That's not even the core of the whole film. The whole message behind it was to not only share an important part of Japanese history, but it was also to show this fictional character who is in the face of danger where he's lost everything and is strong enough to keep pushing forward to make life work out for him. And they just completely disregarded that and only looked at one little scene. But guess what? The parents Parents of the kids got together and also agreed that this was silly and wanted their kids exposed to Barefoot Gen because it is a genuinely good story with a beautiful message behind it. So they got together and made a petition and guess what? They got over 50,000 signatures. Unfortunately, there wasn't really a response. So I'm kind of glad that I was able to correct myself before I continue with this video. Anyways, back to me. The next manga I want to talk about is called Urotsuki Doji. This manga was made around, I think, 19 86 and a lot of people who know this would most likely tell you that it's a cult classic and the best part about it is that this is a hentai and this is actually one of the most famous old school hentai that's a titty hello what is that coming out of her so when this manga came out japan was basically not really ready for some hardcore sex scenes to happen in a manga and oh my god japan you have evolved so much back then i'm so proud of you but a lot of people who have read this manga could tell you that this is basically a cult classic. The only reason that I'm actually holding this in my hand right now is because Joey has the entire series in his stock and I was like, of course. But because this manga had such a dedicated following to it, this manga was being pulled off the shelves left and right and being put back on. A lot of people just didn't really know where to place this. But since the release of this hentai, Japan has gone on to progress to bigger and better things. And now look, this country is so open with its sexuality that it's, it's enough to make me cry. I'm so proud of you, Nippon. Actually, Japan wasn't the only one to wanting to... Japan wasn't the only one who wanted to ban this manga. The controversy surrounding this manga and having it being constantly pulled off the shelves has only caused this to make even more sales and more sequels. And I think any manga that has gone through that much shit and is still able to stand on its own two feet says a lot about this story. Speaking of thriving titles, the last manga that I'm going to share with you guys, I physically cannot say it because YouTube will get on my butt for it. So we're just gonna call it The Grape Man. I don't have a physical copy of this because I can't find it anywhere. Now I know a lot of you are sitting there being like, great man, are you serious? 100%, that's what it's called, and the story is even more wild. The main character is Keisuke Iwasaki, a handsome and very muscular high school teacher by day, and dispenses a surreal and perverted brand of justice at night as the great man under the business Great Man Services, which is co-run with his uncle, a former surgeon. The business's motto is righting the wrongs through penetration. When engaged in his night trade, the great man wears a black leather ski mask shaped like the head of a penis, but no trousers or underwear. And in the middle of the grape, if the woman or girl becomes unresponsive or expresses enjoyment, he uses special techniques such as the M69 screwdriver or infinite loop to apply more pain to the victim. Despite regretting some of these contracts that he fulfills, he always completes the task. Why? So you know what's like super wild about this? Not only was I not able to find any controversy around this manga, but this went on for 13 volumes, had a live action film, two live action films. No. Wait, wait. <coughs> Nine live action films? That's literally more than Harry Potter. Oh my God. Oh my god, what more could you want? And an OVA. It, it doesn't stop. How did I not hear about this series? Considering that this title actually made it overseas as well. It was in the TV series Law and Order, which was crazy to me. There's also a band named the, uh, the Great Man, who actually sounds really good. Can I just like play it for you really quickly? <sighs> Oh, 
by the way, before Twitter tries to like twist my words and like put words in my mouth or whatever, I'm not laughing or smiling at Grape, okay? I'm just, I am so confused and shocked at how long that this was able to go on and nobody even minded. Like it wasn't even an underground thing, like a real budget went towards the series and then made it overseas. And yet I have like never heard about this. Yet you try to ban Barefoot Gen. I mean, I get it, it's a touchy subject, but then you have that. What is problematic? I just, I don't, I don't know anymore. I, I've, <laughs> you know what title I am really glad that they didn't ban though is my doujin that you can get on Faku. And I can't link it in the description because I'll get in like big trouble if I do that. So like just, Google and find Faku and just look for uh, My Housemaid is a Tentacle Monster. Uh, it's written by me and uh, feel free to support the channel if you like. So I appreciate you guys for watching. So don't write for more. Bye!